Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. One of the concerns that many of our patients have as they approach midlife is their memory, cognition, and aging, and the link between the two. Joining me today to discuss this is Dr. Pauline Mackey. Welcome, Pauline. Thank you. Pauline is Professor of Psychiatry and Psychology at the University of Illinois in Chicago. So let's first talk about the whole concept of aging and memory loss. How much of it is considered just aging alone and how much of it is considered time to look into it, whether or not it's signaling something more severe? This is a question that a lot of individuals have, pr primarily women patients. Mm -hmm. We think of women fearing breast cancer, they really fear Alzheimer's disease. So when they experience what we call subjective memory complaints, what the clinician hears in the office visit, my memory's not as good, I'm experiencing kind of fogginess. Can't remember names, can't remember addresses, walk into a room and don't remember why I'm supposed to be there, sound familiar? Right. Yes. So clinicians want to know, if a woman says this, is there any data to suggest that what she's reporting is real? And in fact, we have a number of studies that suggest that the magnitude of the complaint, the more severe the complaint, the actual worse the performance on objective measures. So we need to take these complaints seriously. We need to trust our patients. We need to trust our patients, correct. So where do we go? So first of all, we need to normalize these experiences for women. Fully 60% of women between the ages of 50 and 60 say their memory is much worse than it used to be. So what does that mean? It means it's common, it's the default. Memory complaints increase as women age. In addition, there's actually some evidence to suggest that in women in the menopausal transition, there is a decline in their verbal memory, their ability to learn and remember words, which is, I can't remember conversations, mm -hmm. I can't remember what my husband just told me, what my partner just told me. Those kinds of complaints are what we mean by verbal memory. And those actually decline as a woman begins to experience changes in her menstrual cycle. They reach the peak when women begin to skip menstrual periods, when they're in the late perimenopausal phase. And then there's some suggestion, we don't know for sure, that they come back. So normalizing these experiences, subjective, and objective for our patients is really important because what do women fear? Alzheimer's Absolutely. disease. They fear that they are developing Alzheimer's disease. Now the data around estrogen and memory is very confusing. Does estrogen added in late make memory worse? Is estrogen earlier? Is there a window of opportunity the way we see with cardiovascular data? Where do we stand? So a lot of women who are using hormone therapy for the treatment of their vasomotor symptoms will read the black box warning and say, I don't want dementia, right. I fear dementia. So what can we tell them? The very good news is we now have three large scale, randomized clinical trials comparing hormone therapy to placebo in women between the ages of 50 and 60, and each of those shows that it's cognitively neutral. Mm -hmm. So no benefit overall, but no, no detriment, harm. no harm. Right. So that's reassuring to our female patients. The one caveat that I'll say about that is, somewhat ironically, none of those studies selectively enrolled the women that we prescribe hormone therapy to most frequently, which are the women with the vasomotor symptoms. So those studies showing neutrality were on women without vasomotor symptoms who may or may not have had cognitive complaints. What we don't know is whether the woman who has the disruptive vasomotor symptoms might improve cognitively, either directly because of the hormone therapy on brain systems or indirectly. She's sleeping better. We all function better cognitively when we sleep better. So we do know the good news is that it's neutral in asymptomatic women. There's an open question about whether or not it might benefit memory in women who are experiencing moderate to severe hot flashes. So as physicians advising our patients in terms of lifestyle, exercise, nutrition, alcohol, obesity, what is that role in terms of preventing changes in cognition? That's such an important question. There have been studies that show how many cases of Alzheimer's disease we could prevent by improving health at midlife. So what can we do? We can reduce body mass index. Many of our patients don't want to improve their body mass or their health habits or their lifestyle simply for cardiovascular disease, but they fear Alzheimer's disease. A woman whose body mass index is over 30 at midlife has a twofold increased risk of developing dementia later in life. That's controllable. That's something that she can alter. So body mass index, 
keeping our heart healthy, lowering cholesterol, uh, avoiding hypertension, avoiding prediabetes and diabetes, all of those contribute to a better brain because blood flows to the brain. So that's all very important in preventing uh, cognitive aging, accelerated cognitive aging, and Alzheimer's disease. What can you do today? You can walk briskly three to four times a week, and that alone has been showed to lower the risk of Alzheimer's disease later in life. Has to be cardio, stretching doesn't benefit us. But cardiovascular exercise enhances brain-derived neurotrophic factor right here in our prefrontal cortex and actually builds synapses, increases, enhances the functioning of the brain. And that's true even if a woman has a gene for Alzheimer's disease. So even if she has a gene that predisposes her to Alzheimer's disease later in life, exercise is beneficial for her. So that puts to rest some of the fears. Oh, my mom had Alzheimer's. Her mother had Alzheimer's disease. There's nothing I can do. Actually, exercise works for her. Good advice that we can impart to our patients. Thank you so much, Pauline. You bet.